Good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday, February 16th. Coming to you live from Seoul, I'm Kim mo -kyun. Before we get started, these are the stories we're following at the top of the hour. South Korea's Prime Minister Chung se has announced that the nation has secured additional COVID-19 vaccines for 23 million people by signing contracts with U.S. drug makers Novavax and Pfizer. WHO experts investigating the origin of COVID-19 in China suggest the virus could have infected over 1,000 people in Wuhan in December 2019 before Chinese authorities reported the first case to the WHO. And the situation in Myanmar is becoming more violent as video footage has emerged showing protesters getting fired upon in the city of Mandalay. With the country's very first COVID-19 vaccine rollout just around the corner, South Korea has sealed more vaccine deals with Pfizer and Novavax. For more, we have our Kim Dami on the line for us. Tell me how many more shots will be available. Mugyan Asar has secured enough additional vaccines for 23 million people. So that now makes the country's total vaccine supply enough for 79 million people. Early in the morning, the country's Prime Minister Chung se laid out the details. South Korea has signed a deal with Pfizer to acquire vaccines for around 3 million people in the second quarter of the year. Also, vaccines for 500,000 people will be provided next month instead of in the second half of the year. So Pfizer shots for a total of 3.5 million extra people will be rolled out by the second quarter. The Novavax vaccination rollout will kick off in the latter half of 2021. The Prime Minister added that enough of the jab for 20 million people will be available here in the country. And as for the country's latest COVID-19 updates, the number of daily infections jumped back to the 400s at 457 on Tuesday. The country had kept the daily number of cases below 400 for the past three days. All but 28 cases were local, and there were seven more new deaths. That's all I have. Back to you, Mogan. Thank you for that, Tommy. We appreciate it. Now moving on, the WHO has approved AstraZeneca Oxford's COVID-19 vaccine for emergency use, providing wider access to the vaccine in developing countries. In a news briefing Monday, the WHO Director General said all the pieces are in place for its rapid distribution, but stressed there needs to be a boost in production. The approval also comes days after a panel provided an interim recommendation on the vaccine, saying two doses with an interval of around 8 to 12 weeks should be given to all adults. The WHO's review also found AstraZeneca's vaccine met the must-have criteria for safety, adding its efficacy outweighed its risks. As more findings by a team of WHO experts investigating the origin of COVID-19 in China are being revealed, the team suggests the virus could have infected over 1,000 people in Wuhan in December 2019 before Chinese authorities reported the first case to the WHO. Our Kim hyo Sun has more details. The head of the WHO's investigation team looking into the origin of a novel coronavirus in the Chinese city of Wuhan says the virus was circulating more widely within the city in December 2019 than previously thought. We have a much, much better understanding of what happened in December 2019. We have been able to demonstrate that there was substantial uh, circulation of the virus in Wuhan in, uh, in December 19. We've been able to link genetic sequences of different patients uh, across the city in December with their physical location in and outside the market uh, across the time from early December to end of December. Citing the team, CNN reported there were over a dozen strains of the virus in Wuhan in December 2019, meaning the virus was already widespread before Chinese authorities reported to the WHO on December 31, 2019. While the team was presented by Chinese scientists with 174 cases in and around Wuhan in December 2019, the WHO experts believe the virus could have infected over 1,000 people in the city that month. The team added the Huana Seafood Market is not the only source of spread throughout the city, explaining Chinese officials said the first infected patient they saw had no links with the market. There's not a clear uh, candidate for an intermediate uh, host yet, uh, but the work on the market and the trace back process that was done there does provide some leads for next steps in the, uh, in the studies. And I think those are as important 
uh, part of a quest like this as um, as data that tell you uh, the positive news. The WHO team said it hopes to return to Wuhan in the coming months to continue the probe, but no concrete dates have been confirmed. The WHO team is expected to publish a detailed summary of its findings soon. Kim Hyesan, Arirang News. It's been over a month since North Korea issued its ambitious five-year economic plan, but there are signs that the regime is already facing difficulties. Current challenges from border closures and a significant drop in trade volume is not making the situation any better. Our Che min -jung reports. There are signs that North Korea's ambitious economic strategy unveiled last month is already facing some challenges. During the ruling Workers' Party Congress in January, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un issued a new five-year economic development plan focused on self-reliance. However, during the party's second Central Committee meeting held last week, Kim reportedly criticized economic agencies for their, quote, passive and self-protecting tendencies and failure to carry out their roles. The plenary meeting reconvened and the director of the Economic Affairs Department was changed with Oh soo replacing Kim doo -il less than a month after his appointment. The fact that he replaced the economic director in less than a month means that there is a significant problem in the planning stage. It shows that he is willing to enforce plans through social control and fear. The North state-run media recently said the regime will miss a crucial opportunity for economic development if it fails to implement innovative tactics. However, sanctions led by the U.S. and border closures due to the pandemic have put North Korea in a tough position. Trade with China, which is the regime's main source of economic support, has dropped dramatically by more than 80 percent over the past year. With these difficulties combined with Kim's self-reliant economic policy, concerns are growing as to how much longer North Korea can withstand economic isolation. Choi min Dong, Arirang News. South Korea's chief nuclear envoy on Monday discussed cooperation for complete denuclearization and lasting peace on the Korean peninsula in a phone call with his Japanese counterpart. According to Seoul's foreign ministry, the talks come as the U.S. stresses the importance of trilateral cooperation with South Korea and Japan in addressing regional challenges, including Pyongyang's nuclear issue. It added that the two sides assess the current situation and exchange views on ways to facilitate cooperation going forward, agreeing to engage in close communication. The number of jobs in the local accommodation sector continues to drop following business shutdowns and layoffs caused by the prolonged pandemic. According to data from Statistics Korea, analyzed by Yonhap News Agency, the number of jobs in the sector last month stood at around 1.7 million. That's a drop of almost 370,000 compared to a year ago. And, and it's also the first time that job numbers fell below 2 million since last February. Analysts point to much stricter social distancing measures like no private gatherings of five or more people as a reason for the drop. The World Trade Organization has appointed a former Nigerian finance minister as the new head of the organization. Ngozi Okonzo Iwala becomes the first woman and the first of African to lead the WTO. Our Isinje has more. The World Trade Organization on Monday appointed Ngozi Okonjo Iwala as its new director general following a special general counsel meeting. I, as General Counsel Chair, supported by the facilitators, thereby recommend formally that the General Counsel agree to appoint Dr. Ngozi Konjo Uela of Nigeria as the next Director General of the WTO starting on 1st of March 2021 until 31st August 2025. It is so agreed. Her appointment comes three months after the former Trump administration rejected the former Nigerian finance minister. Being named as the new chief of the WTO, she becomes the first woman and first African director general of the organization. In her acceptance speech, she expressed gratitude for having the opportunity to lead the WTO, not because of her gender, 
nor her ethnicity, but her knowledge and experience in the field. The 66-year-old also highlighted some key issues that need to be tackled. The pandemic and its economic fallout have highlighted the interdependence of countries, the importance of multilateralism, and the need to strengthen collaboration to achieve fair and balanced trade agreements that provide opportunities for all WTO members, particularly for the least developed countries and small island states. As Director General, the newly appointed WTO chief will need to resolve several issues, including the need to broker international trade talks in the face of U.S.-China tensions, pressure to reform trade rules, and countering protectionism heightened by the pandemic. She added that getting a trade deal at the next major ministerial meeting would be a top priority, while urging members to reject vaccine nationalism. Akonjo Iwela is a 25-year veteran of the World Bank and oversaw an 81 billion U.S. dollar portfolio. She ran against seven other candidates, including South Korean Trade Minister Yoo Myung-hee, to earn her position as the head of the WTO. Lee Seung-jae, Arirang News. As demonstrations against Myanmar's military takeover enter into second week, the situation in the country is becoming more violent. During demonstrations in the city of Mandalay on Monday, security forces opened fire on protesters, although whether the bullets used were rubber or live ammunition is still unclear. The number of casualties is also not clear, but Reuters, quoting local media, reported that a number of people were wounded. Beginning Sunday, armored vehicles were deployed to Yangon, Milkina and Mitkina and Sitwe, the first large-scale use of such vehicles since the coup began. The International Atomic Energy Agency could be restricted from inspecting Iran's nuclear activities unless members of the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action uphold their obligations by next week. Iran's foreign ministry on Monday specifically pinpointed that inspections on short notice will be blocked, but said it does not mean they will end all inspections by the UN nuclear watchdog. This has been read as a challenge to the U.S. President Joe Biden's hopes of reviving the 2015 accord. After the Trump administration abandoned the action in 2018, Iran began violating some of the deal's limits on sensitive uranium enrichment. Washington and Tehran now disagree over how to best restore the accord, with both sides demanding the other to act first in order to return to compliance. A group of Western countries led by Canada have set up a coalition against the detention of foreign nationals for diplomatic leverage in a move to tackle a political tactic used by Beijing and Tehran. The Wall Street Journal reported Monday that 58 countries, including the U.S., Japan and Australia, have signed a declaration against such behavior. Although the Canadian foreign ministry claims it doesn't target a single nation, it is aimed at bringing diplomatic pressure on countries that take advantage of such situations. Instead, Canada's foreign minister told reporters Sunday that he's seeking the support of other countries to stop the illegal and immoral imprisonments. It can be extremely stressful for people who need to be hospitalized after testing positive for COVID-19. To help relieve some of the anxiety, a hospital in Seoul has produced videos for people to learn more about the process from day one right up until they are discharged. The videos illustrate what patients need to bring to hospital and how to check their blood pressure, temperature and blood sugar levels. With staff and patients unable to communicate in negative pressure rooms, it's hoped the videos will keep patients informed. Good morning. Hope you're dressed up warm to cope with the freezing cold weather. The midwinter weather is here again with cold wave advisories in place for most parts of the country. In fact, the lows were about 10 to 12 degrees lower than the same time yesterday. 
and also brace for some snowfall this afternoon. The south of Gyeonggi-do and Chungcheong-do provinces will see up to 7 centimeters of snowfall, while the rest of us will see 1 to 3 centimeters of snow through late this afternoon. In fact, mountainous regions of Jeju and Jeollado provinces could see snow into Thursday. In daily highs in Seoul and Chuncheon will only get up to minus 1 degree Celsius, and the snow should let up before the evening commute, but as more freezing air will be surging in, a rough drive home seems unavoidable. A severe cold snap is expected on Wednesday at a low of minus 10 degrees Celsius here in the capital. But warm weather returns on Friday afternoon. That's Korea for you, and here's a look at the weather conditions around the world. And that's a wrap for us at the hour on Arirang News. We'll be back with more of the day's headlines at noon Korea time, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching and goodbye.